third tool we use to analyse stocks and their valuation is to look at earnings per share. This is really a very simple calculation. Look at the earnings generated by the company divided by the number of shares in issue. This gives us a very simple, accurate picture of how well the company is doing. Now, there's not much point in just looking at one of these earnings per share figures in isolation. You need to look at the trend and you should need to look over a past period and also to get some idea of what the market is predicting for the future. Typically, earnings per shares are volatile. They don't always go up in a nice straight line after every single reporting period. That would be too much to hope for. But they can give you a good indication of how well the company is doing. Also, from a trading perspective, it might be that a particular industry sector is doing very well, but why are the earnings per share of a particular company within that sector not doing well? Are they falling behind? Are they in serious trouble? What is going on? It's a signal if they're not keeping up with their peers. So earnings per share is a nice way to compare companies with one another and with other industry sectors. So one of the problems with understanding price earnings ratios is they're not bounded. There is no absolute top. And although a market may be overvalued or indeed undervalued, it can stay in that condition for a long period of time. Even so, it is a warning signal that you're on thin ice. If you're very long of stocks as a long-term investor, when price earnings ratios are so high, you should be aware you're in a danger zone. Equally, when price earnings ratios are very low and you've decided to ignore stocks, perhaps you've been in cash or in bonds, you may be missing a good long-term buying opportunity. So not a short-term trading indicator, but a long-term indicator that should inform your strategy of when you want to be in stocks or in other markets. We've looked at the relationship between asset classes and the business cycle, how bonds, stocks and commodities seem to interact with economic activity and general business conditions. It's interesting when looking at past examples how these three asset classes closely follow what is going on in the business cycle. We cannot be certain that will happen in the future, but it certainly should inform our ideas about what may happen. Certainly, there is a close linkage between economic business activity and the various asset classes. When we come to look at specific trading opportunities and looking at valuation of shares, we've looked at three tools. We've looked at price earnings ratios, we've looked at net asset values, and we've looked at earnings per share. All three of these are important, but they become powerful for you as a trading tool when you combine them. Think to yourself when you're putting together your trading strategy. Where is the price earnings ratio? Is this company very highly valued or undervalued? How does it look against its peer group in the industry? Or is that industry a rather depressed or overvalued sector? Net asset value. When I buy this share, what am I buying? Am I buying cash in the bank that the bank has got there? Hard assets? Or is it just a couple of guys with bright ideas that have no intrinsic value. It may be that the share has got important potential in the future, but it's built on a very low net asset value. And finally, how is the company doing? Earnings per share. What dollars are being generated by the business? Is it a flash in the pan? Is it a sustainable trend? Is it doing well against the industry and against its competitors? Or is it lagging behind and suffering? When you put those three together, you can build a picture of valuation of a stock and you can start to formulate a trading strategy.